All right, guys, in this video, let's start learning about routing and navigation in Angular. Now, any Angular application you build is going to have multiple components, each component with its own view. So we need a way to navigate between the different views as and when the user performs some action. And for this purpose, we make use of Angular's router. I want to mention here that even though we did learn about services, I am not going to use services while explaining the different concepts of routing. I want to focus on routing and routing alone. So we will be using hard-coded data for our examples. And there is a lot to learn about Angular's router. So let's learn one concept at a time. In this video, we are going to learn how to navigate between two different views with button clicks. So when the user navigates to the URL localhost colon 4200, we display a title that says routing and navigation. And below the title, we are going to have two buttons. The first one says departments and the second says employees. If we navigate to the URL localhost colon 4200 slash departments, or click on the departments button, we display a list of departments. If we navigate to the URL localhost colon 4200 slash employees or click on the employees button, we display a list of employees. So based on the URL or which button the user clicks, we navigate to the appropriate view. Now to implement this requirement, here are the steps. First, we generate a new project using Angular CLI with the routing option. Second step, we generate the department list component and employee list component. These are the components we want to display in the view. Third step, we configure the routes for our application. This will allow us to navigate to the routes from the URL. Fourth step, we add buttons and use directives to navigate to the configured routes. So let's begin with step one, generating a new application. I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio Code and I am in the Angular project folder. Open the integrated terminal and type the command ng new followed by the project name. I'm gonna call this project routing demo. And since this is an application with routing, we also include the routing option, dash dash routing. All right, so the project was successfully created. Now, we might not always generate a new application with the routing option. We might want to add routing to our existing application as well. So let me go over what the routing option does and you can replicate the exact same code in your existing application as well. Now the first thing you need to include is the base tag in your index.html file. So in the source folder, open index.html and as a child to the head tag, add a base tag and set the value of href attribute to a forward slash. This is required so that the application knows how to construct the URLs while navigating. Next, in the app folder, create a new file app-routing.module.ts. This file contains the routing module for our application. This is where we configure the different routes. We will come back to this in a bit. Finally, import app routing module in app module. So in app.module.ts, import app routing module and add it to the imports array so that it is part of the routing demo application. All right, so that is our first step. Generate a new Angular application with the routing option. The second step is to generate the department list and employee list components that we will be navigating to. So in the terminal, navigate inside the project folder, cd routing demo, run the command ng, g for generate, c for component, department hyphen list, dash it for inline template, dash is for inline style. Similarly, ng, g for generate, c for component, employee dash list, 
dash it for inline template dash is for inline style so that is our second step generating the two components the third step is to configure the routes for the application and we do that in the app routing module so we have a constant routes which is strongly typed to routes from the router package here we define all possible routes for our application and each route is nothing but an object the object contains a path which is reflected in the url and the component to be rendered when we navigate to that corresponding path now we need to configure two routes for our application the first one is departments and the second one is employees so in the first route enter the path as departments and in the second route enter the path as employees if we navigate to departments we need to display the department list component so specify the component property similarly if we navigate to employees we need to display the employee list component make sure to import the two components as well but by doing so we are duplicating the import statements we have the same import statements in both app routing module and app module so what i like to do is create an array of all the routing components export it and then import it in the app module so i'm going to create a new constant and export it export const routing components and this is going to be equal to an array of the two components department list component and employee list component and then in the app module we import it so import app routing module and routing components from app routing dot module typescript file i'm going to remove the two import statements and in the declarations array i'm going to replace them with the routing components so now any time we add a new component for routing you just have to specify in the routing module so this is a good practice and i recommend you do the same all right the routes have been configured if you navigate to localhost 4200/departments we display the department list component and localhost 4200/employees we display the employee list component but hang on how are we specifying where these components have to be displayed the answer is the router outlet directive so if you take a look at app component html at the very bottom you see this directive router outlet this directive is available from the router package and it marks where the router displays a view so you can say that the router view goes here now let me also simplify the app component html we don't need these unwanted html markup so i'm going to remove it remove the h2 tag as well remove the image and instead of welcome to title our title is going to be routing and navigation all right now our application is ready to be tested let's save this and run the application npm start open your browser and navigate to localhost colon 4200 and you should be able to see routing and navigation if i change the url to slash departments you can see the department list component being displayed and if i change the url to slash employees you can see that the employee list component being displayed so routing is working as expected based on the url we navigate to the corresponding component is displayed but we cannot expect the user to navigate to the components by typing out the url so let's add some buttons to navigate between these views let's go back to app component html i'm going to add a nav tag and within the nav tag two anchor tags departments employees to make routing possible with these anchor tags we use two special directives from the router package the first one is the router link directive which specifies the path to which we want to navigate to so when we click on the departments button we want to navigate to the departments path 
Similarly, when we click on the employees button, we navigate to the employees path. The second directive is the router link active directive. This directive lets you specify one or more CSS classes that will be applied when the corresponding router link is active. Or in simpler terms, you click on the anchor tag and the class specified over here gets applied to the anchor tag. For our example, I'm going to use the active class. If you take a look at styles.css, you can see that for the active class, we just change the color. Now the code is available on my GitHub repo, so don't worry about rest of the classes here. And let me add the directive to the employees button as well. Now let's save this and take a look at the browser. So localhost 4200 and we see the title, routing and navigation and the two buttons, departments and employees. If I click on departments, the URL changes and the department list component is displayed. You can also see that the button font color is changed because the active class is now applied to this anchor tag. If I click on employees, the URL changes to slash employees and the employee list component is displayed. The active class is now applied to this anchor tag and hence you see the change in font color. So we have implemented basic routing in our Angular application. Let me quickly remind you of the steps. In index.html, add the base tag and set href to a forward slash. In the app routing module, configure the routes. Each route has a path and the corresponding component. Once you have the routes defined, pass it as an argument to the for root method of the router module. Export the app routing module and the routing components. Import it in the app module and include it in the imports array and the declarations array. With this setup, you can navigate to the particular route by directly typing in the URL. To navigate via buttons, use the router link directive and specify the path. To change the style of the active route, use the router link active directive. Alright, so that is how you navigate between different views using button clicks. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.